For as long as I can remember, I've always written songs about my day. There was something about sitting down at a piano and opening up a notebook that was able to really release something for me. I found music through my family. In my earliest years, I was babysat by my grandparents who lived below me. They kept a small piano tucked away in a hallway near the front door, which had belonged to my mother when she took lessons as a young girl. And now me, a curious five-year-old, had all the access to it. For hours, I would sit, entertaining myself with the endless possibilities it had to offer. I knew whatever I was feeling that day, I could get out by sitting at that piano. And it was at that very same piano, six years later, when I wrote my very first full-length song. I called it Sally because it followed the story of a woman going through the different phases of her life, named Sally. And although the story was completely made up through my imagination, it touched upon very real topics, like understanding one's story and finding oneself. By that time, I was 11 years old and had been attending a nonprofit music organization near my house called Zoomix. After showing some staff there the song, they started having me perform it around at different community events and even on TV. It was the first time my songs became more than scattered ideas and scribbled lines on a paper. Song after song, I would finish one and move on to the next, performing them for people as I went along. This routine became second nature. It was my way of escaping troubles at home or at school. And in my freshman year of high school, myself and three students from Zoomix formed a band. Up until that moment, writing had always just been me and the piano. And now, with guitar, bass, and drums added into the mix, it allowed me to really focus on the lyrics and melodies. We called ourselves Wild Painting. We wrote our first song, Distractions, in February of 2016. At the time, I was experiencing lots of depression and anxiety, something I still struggle with to this day. I wrote the song in under an hour, and all of a sudden, all of those feelings that I had built up inside of me that felt absolutely impossible to come out were able to come out through the song. It was an out-of-body experience one that I'm extremely grateful for. And being able to sing about those experiences and those feelings I had literally saved my life. So in 2017, we decided to release an eight song EP. And just like that, Distractions was out into the world. I remember feeling like that song out of all of them would be the most overlooked. It's the least dancey, over five minutes long, and although it had the most emotional impact on me, I wasn't sure how others would receive it. Less than two years later, it has over 660,000 streams on Spotify alone. <laughs> People have come up to me after shows and to this day send me messages talking about how much they've been able to relate to the song, how it's been able to help them get through situations, and how they've been able to use it for healing, similar to how I was able to use it for healing. Getting these messages opened my eyes so much and really put into perspective that everything has a greater purpose. You see, I thought I was writing the song just for me, but really there was a whole world waiting to hear what I had to say. It was just up to me to choose to share it. This has allowed me to continue to realize that what I have to say is important. My feelings and my life experiences are valid and sharing them with others can actually impact the lives of others. I've decided to keep this choice in mind with other projects like writing about climate change and youth culture with the Boston Landmarks Orchestra to hosting songwriting workshops with young women and girls who've experienced trauma. In addition to songwriting, I've also found myself using my voice for a greater purpose 
through other things, specifically community organizing. You see, growing up in the city of Boston, I've experienced firsthand how finding a safe space to share work has been a battle I've had to overcome, not just for myself, but for other youth around me. So in the summer of 2017, my friends and I decided we were going to be change makers. We decided we were going to put on Boston's first ever youth-run music festival with the help from supporting local nonprofits. The festival ran 10 hours long and packed over 20 musical performances as well as visual artists, many of whom were showcasing their work in front of a live audience for the first time ever. Because after hours and hours of planning this thing, we knew we needed to create as much space as we could. Such a success, we put on over five mini Yes Fest throughout the 2018 school year and held our second Yes Fest music festival in October of 2018. Creating space is something I'm extremely passionate about and find very important. I believe that if you want to see something happen, the only thing separating you and that thing is the act of making it happen. I learned this at a very young age to create spaces that met the needs of myself and my community. I've found myself as a radio host, producing and directing a live weekly show, interviewing local artists and community members, many of whom have marginalized identities that are underrepresented in radio, to hosting clothing swaps with my friends as an alternative to spending money on back to school clothes and providing a personal and efficient way to recycling old clothes. In life, things do not just come out of the blue. I know I'm going to have to work for everything that I want to see, and I choose to organize my efforts around interpersonal and community-based needs. Yes. Now, let's take it back to where it all started, songwriting. Without individuals paving the way for me to explore my natural creativity, I would have never known how much can happen by sharing my ideas with others. Growing up in these safe, empowering spaces and being given opportunities has allowed me to realize that everything has a greater purpose. There are always people in need, and you can be the voice to, put help, to help put action into place, no matter your age. Supporting these safe spaces is necessary. Support the change makers, local artists, and community members, and organizers. Be the change maker. I encourage you to think, what's your story? How do you use your voice for a greater purpose? And what are ways you can continue to do this? Be the change maker. Thank you.